Coronation Fund Managers was founded in 1993 in Cape Town and is one of Southern Africa's most successful third-party fund management companies. Assets under, manage, under management here, Paul? Just gone through the 600 billion rand mark. I mean, that is truly astonishing. And it's because they've been the hot go-to guys in the market recently. They've delivered fantastic equity performance. I think a little bit of a stumble here in the last quarter. We'll have to talk about that. But certainly uh, the continued momentum from their previous outperformance is still bearing fabulous profits and the juice keeps flowing. Market cap here. Are we right at 35.4 billion? PE of 17.7, dividend yield of 5.64%. Let's focus a little on the stumble that Paul was alluding to. Well, they had some exposure to African Bank, for instance, uh, that more for sentiment and for their reputation meant a little bit of a knock for coronation. But they still, if you look at the numbers of 31 December, had some inflows, still very good performance, first quarter over most periods for most of the unit trusts. So it might be a stumble, but they did not fall. Um, and you still see those inflows, which means the performance fees are still there because of the first quarter, uh, first quarter performance. The management fees are growing on the inflows. So I'm not too concerned about coronation and the very recent performance. Mm. I was alluding more to their top 20 fund, which displays in its core holdings a big bet on a couple of the mining stocks. I may be wrong. This is managed by Neville Chester. Yes, I'm concerned that that fund is going to further underperform its uh, benchmark, which is the All Z40, and it's going to start getting noticed by some of the crocodiles wearing white shoes. I'm referring to the financial advisors out there that shunt their clients' funds around into the top performing fund in the most recent quartile. After a period of really superior performance, I'm just a little concerned that the flagship coronation funds are not doing as well compared to their benchmarks you, as they were. I might be wrong. You're not a fan of the financial advisors and your business doesn't depend no, on them, no, thank goodness. No, 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 those people are terrible. <laughs> I'm sure there are many of them watching tonight. Those guys, but don't get me distracted here. Oh, you, JP, come in quickly. Well, I think Paul's being polite, so I'll rather <laughs> leave it there. Uh, please, let's not talk about the financial <laughs> advisors on this show. Uh, what I would say is yes, that is a concern. <laughs> Um, the local funds, most of them are on a two-year rolling performance fee basis. So the one-year performance does not look good. One would hope that they see the error of their ways, not go for everything that might look cheap, that uh, uh, makes a hole in the ground, mm. which um, I think we agree is not that great. But the global funds, for me, will pick up the slack. So the global emerging markets franchise is growing nicely. They launched global equities, which I assume would also do well if you look at their track record. So, uh, yes, I Let, still like Let's the look business. at the share price graph here. Mm, very nice, going through 100 Rand and holding above there. The other thing that I think must be noted about Coronation is that they have made so many people so rich inside the business that they keep leaving. So there's a little bit of a concern for me that there's been a bit of a brains trust outflow and that has been covered so far. But, you know, I just worry, does Carl Leinberger have enough smart people around him that he's going to continue to deliver as good a performance? I'd be interested in that. Is this a fair criticism? It, it is. If, if you think about a lot of asset management businesses, they're mostly private. And um, a lot of the wealth is distributed throughout the team. But when you have a public company where everyone can see the shareholding and see what people are worth in the organization, it does create an incentive for, for people to say, well, I can see how much I'm worth. I can easily share my, uh, sell my shares in the market. So let me rather go retire or do something on my own. So I think there is more pressure on someone working at Coronation than other privately owned asset managers. You satisfied with the answer from JP well, I then? I think that what that means is a taste of toy is gone, you know. Um, you know, Akugo and Nelson is gone. Some of the other founders like David Barnes but Gavin and... But Gavin is still there, Neville Cross is, uh, Neville, Neville Chester Chester's is still, still there. there. Three ex-CIOs are still there. So even yeah. though the pressure is higher, the, long, the longer they keep on performing, the more the incentive also to say, wow, if we stick with Coronation, we p benefit personally mm -hmm. as well. So it is a concern, but I think that the fact that uh, the, the um, employees always own 24%, plus they have the 30% pre-tax bonus pool, means there's a lot of incentive also to stay to in the business. Around. Hot or not on Coronation, Paul Turan? Look, I'm ha hot on where the market's going. These guys are still enjoying like 100 million rands a day of inflows, which gives them the ability to steer that in stocks they like and to push the share prices higher. So I'm still hot on this one. Hot or not? Also hot.